Peace loving viewers, welcome to part two of The Common Origin of Man Selections from Theosophy's Sacred Teachings in the Key to Theosophy. The 19th century Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky was born into a noble family in Ukraine. As a child, young Helena displayed a gift for clairvoyance as well as an interest in metaphysical phenomena. Years later, she traveled throughout Europe, the Middle East, and India, studying with various teachers and Sufi saints. Following the guidance of an Indian yogi named Mahatma Moriya, Madame Blavatsky co-founded the Theosophical Society. Theosophy, meaning divine wisdom, refers to knowledge that comes through spiritual experience rather than intellectual understanding alone. The Theosophical Society is dedicated to uplifting humanity through a realization of the oneness of life and the wisdom underlying all religions. Madame Blavatsky wrote several important books on theosophy, including Isis Unveiled, The Secret Doctrine, The Key to Theosophy, and The Voice of the Silence. The Key to Theosophy unlocks the door that leads to a deeper study of theosophy in contrast to other theosophy volumes. It is written in simple explanatory language. Readers are thus able to more easily understand its fundamental principles. Today on Words of Wisdom, we invite you to join us for excerpts from The Key to Theosophy. In this section, The Common Origin of Man, we see that all of humanity is united through a spiritual essence that is identical for us all. Understanding this can also lead to a peaceful understanding among religions, since it will then be clear that all beliefs in the Divine originate from the same higher source. The Common Origin of Man Inquirer This refers to the common origin of religions, and you may be right there. But how does it apply to practical brotherhood on the physical plane? Theosophist First, because that which is true on the metaphysical plane must be also true on the physical. Secondly, because there is no more fertile source of hatred and strife than religious differences. When one party or another thinks himself the sole professor of absolute truth, it becomes only natural that he should think his neighbor absolutely in the clutches of error or the devil. But once, get a man to see that none of them has the whole truth, but that they are mutually complementary, that the complete truth can be found only in the combined views of all, after that which is false in each of them has been sifted out, then true brotherhood in religion will be established. The same applies in the physical world. Enquirer, please explain further. Theosophist, take an instance. A plant consists of a root, a stem, and many shoots and leaves. As humanity, as a whole, is the stem which grows from the spiritual root, so is the stem the unity of the plant. Hurt the stem, and it is obvious that every shoot and leaf will suffer. So it is with mankind. Enquirer, yes, but if you injure a leaf or a shoot, you do not injure the whole plant. Theosophist, and therefore you think that by injuring one man, you do not injure humanity? But how do you know? Are you aware that even materialistic science teaches that any injury, however slight to a plant, 
will affect the whole course of its future growth and development. Therefore, you are mistaken, and the analogy is perfect. If, however, you overlook the fact that a cut in the finger may often make the whole body suffer and react on the whole nervous system, I must all the more remind you that there may well be other spiritual laws operating on plants and animals as well as on mankind. Although as you do not recognize their action on plants and animals, you may deny their existence. Enquirer, what laws do you mean? Theosophist, we call them karmic laws, but you will not understand the full meaning of the term unless you study occultism. However, my argument did not rest on the assumption of these laws, but really on the analogy of the plant. Expand the idea, carry it out to a universal application, and you will soon find that in true philosophy, every physical action has its moral and everlasting effect. Hurt a man by doing him bodily harm. You may think that his pain and suffering cannot spread by any means to his neighbors, least of all to men of other nations. We affirm that it will, in good time. Therefore we say that unless every man is brought to understand and accept as an axiomatic truth that by wronging one man we wrong not only ourselves but the whole of humanity in the long run, no brotherly feelings such as preached by all the great reformers, preeminently by Buddha and Jesus, are possible on earth. Enquirer Will you now explain the methods by which you propose to carry out the second objective? Theosophist, to collect for the library at our headquarters of Adyar, Madras, all the good works upon the world's religions that we can, to put into written form correct information upon the various ancient philosophies, traditions, and legends, and disseminate the same in such practicable ways as the translation and publication of original works of value and extracts from and commentaries upon the same or the oral instructions of persons learned in their respective departments. Enquirer, and what about the third objective? to develop in man his latent spiritual or psychic powers. Theosophist, this has to be achieved also by means of publications in those places where no lectures and personal teachings are possible. Our duty is to keep alive in man his spiritual intuitions, to oppose and counteract, after due investigation and proof of its irrational nature, bigotry in every form religious, scientific, or social, and above all, whether as religious sectarianism or as belief in miracles or anything supernatural. What we have to do is to seek to obtain knowledge of all the laws of nature and to diffuse it, to encourage the study of those laws least understood by modern people, the so-called occult sciences, based on the true knowledge of nature instead of, as at present, on superstitious beliefs based on blind faith and authority. Popular folklore and traditions, however fanciful at times, when sifted may lead to the discovery of long-lost but important secrets of nature. The society, therefore, aims at pursuing this line of inquiry in the hope of widening the field of scientific and philosophical observation. Continue to make war, because you don't even know how to spell civilization. Gracious viewers, we appreciate your company today for the common origin of man, selections from Theosophy's sacred teachings in the Key to Theosophy, Part 2 of 2 on Words of Wisdom.